Have you ever played a game and seen a menu that opens up more menus and thought, man, I would love to replicate that in modern games? No? It's just me that enjoys overly convoluted menu systems? Well, alright then. Uh, regardless, I found a way to do some pretty neat stuff with radial menus, and touch menus if you prefer those. Today I'd like to go over two ideas that I've been working on. Cycling menus and nested menus. Let's dig into cycling first. When I touch the right pad I open up a radial menu with the first set of bindings. This one contains fire weapon bound to the top button and reload weapon bound to the bottom. Clicking on either of these bindings does exactly what you expect them to do. The left and right bindings are used to go to the previous or next menu, but since this is the first one, there isn't a previous menu to return to, hence the red X. Clicking on next menu opens up a new radial menu, this time with 1 through 5 bound. This would be a weapon select wheel, and again, it works as expected. You'll notice that I have an empty binding in the bottom right corner. This is just to keep the positions of the bindings on the cardinal and diagonal directions. Otherwise it would only be 7 bindings and would be a bit lopsided, putting next and previous menus in odd locations. The left arrow returns us to the first menu, while the right arrow takes us to the third, which houses jump and crouch. To accomplish this idea, you'll need to make a separate action layer for each menu that you want to create. Now, add your bindings to each menu, making sure that you have one binding for next menu, which should be bound to apply the next layer, and one for previous menu, which should be bound to remove the current layer. Keep in mind that the first menu won't have a previous menu binding, and the last menu won't have a next menu binding. If you want, you could add icons to each binding, and then turn off display binding label for a cleaner menu look. Next, make sure that each menu is set to activate on button release. Otherwise, you'll end up activating items on the next menu as soon as it pops up. Finally, go back to the base action set and configure the touchpad to use the single button input style with a touch binding to apply the first menu's action layer. I do this to reduce the friction of rearranging the menu order. If I put the first menu in the base action set, then I would need to modify the entire radio menu to change the first menu. Putting all of the menus in layers means that I just need to change which layers are applied or removed throughout the config. And there you have it. Cyclable. Cyclable. Uh, menus that you can cycle through. Here are a few quick notes to ensure your menus are working as expected. First, as I stated earlier, try to work with 4 and 8 item menus. This will ensure that you have a binding on exactly the left and right sides of the pad for moving between menus. It also keeps all of your menu items on exactly a cardinal or diagonal direction. This will help build muscle memory since menu items will always be in the same place. Secondly, keep track of menus that reduce the number of menu items when moving to the right such as in my example where menu 2 has 8 items, but menu 3 only has 4. Due to the way that layers work, Steam Input will still use an 8 item menu and simply use menu 2 to fill in the empty items. There are a couple ways to get around this, such as removing every layer that you aren't currently using, but I found the easiest way is to simply add empty bindings to the extra slots in menu 3. This tells Steam, yeah, I know you could load menu 2's items here, but I specifically want just 4 items. What if I just stole the menu idea from Neverwinter Nights and grouped each of these sets of hotkeys into their own menu that was accessed from a central menu? Well, I'm here to tell you that that idea works beautifully. I can click on a wisp and select the build button from my radial, which opens the in-game build menu as well as my build radial menu in Steam Input. I also have menus for the Ancient of War to build new infantry, the Tree of Life for building new wisps, and two additional menus for creating unit groups and selecting those unit groups. This one isn't as tricky as the last idea. To set this one up, begin by making an action layer for each specific menu that you'll want. Then go back to the radial menu on the base action set, 
and set each item to apply one of the layers. On button release again. Here I have the build menu, the Tree of Life's hotkeys, the Ancient of War's hotkeys, and then one layer for assigning a group and another for selecting a group. Go into each of the layers and set up the menus for the hotkeys that you need grouped together. So the build layer has all of the building hotkeys and the Tree of Life has all the shortcuts for the Tree of Life, etc, etc. Just like with the cycled menus, make sure that any menus that have less menu items than the base one uses empty bindings to ensure the menu is correct. On each of these menus, be sure to set a center binding to remove the layer so that you can return to the base menu if you accidentally click the wrong menu item. For one and done bindings, like building a building, you can add a click action to the menu that removes the layer, using a little bit of fire start delay to ensure that the actual binding has time to fire off before switching menus. This will automatically exit back to the base menu when you make a selection. I wouldn't suggest doing this for menus that you want to use repeatedly, such as producing multiple units though. Better to keep those menus open until you manually exit them. And that's how you put a radio menu in a radio menu. And that's only the tip of the iceberg. You could use the bumpers to cycle between menus rather than menu items, making it feel like actual console style menus. You could nest menus within menus, like in Neverwinter Nights. You could even combine these two methods and mix up the menus. You could have a radio menu open a touch menu that opens a third menu that can cycle between itself and another menu, either with menu items or bumpers. Just remember to keep track of what layers are applied and make sure to properly remove them as you are coming back down these complex layered layers. And don't forget that this isn't just for touchpads. Almost every input source can use radial menus, so you could create three sets of face button bindings and have B cycle between them, with A, X, and Y getting modified. The options are limitless really, though you begin running into temporal issues when you start having to navigate three and four menus deep to get into a hotkey. Something like that might be better suited for turn-based strategy games like Civilization, rather than for real-time stuff where actions per minute are a real statistic that influences matches. Regardless, this is a pretty nifty way to cram a lot of bindings into a small space in an intuitive fashion and can be used in all sorts of ways.